Hello my lovelies and welcome back to Sondering Tarot or if you're new here, hi, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. This is your daily tarot reading for the very first day of August 2023. My ancestors have asked to use the Tarot of Oneness again for today's daily tarot reading. Um, I usually try to utilize a oracle deck for the first of the month just to shake it up, but they asked for the Tarot of Oneness, so this is what we're going to go ahead and use. Today's daily tarot reading can um, potentially give you an overarching energy for the month um, or just for today. We'll see how that resonates with each and every one of you, so let us begin. Okay, my lovelies, I do have all of your cards on the table. And please note that if you're not familiar with the Terror of Oneness, this deck does have additional cards. We do have an additional card on the table. I will be counting that card as one for the sake of numerology. And in fact, we have five major arcana, one ace, and one additional card. We have the King of Swords, the Two of Swords, the Ace of Cups in the reverse, the Eight of Cups, the Six of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, the Sun in the reverse, the Two of Cups in the reverse, the Star, the Three of Cups, Present Moment in the reverse, so that's an additional card, the World in the reverse, the Seven of Pentacles, the Empress, the Four of Cups, the Three of Swords in the reverse, the Nine of Swords, and the Strength card in the reverse. So a little bit of um, energy from yesterday still coming through, um, which makes perfect sense considering there's a full moon in Aquarius, which I failed to mention yesterday, happening today. So this is the peak of the full moon. Not surprised that it bled in from one day to the other or that they asked for the same deck when I put it in hindsight. But we've got our thinking cap on and we're making choices, which is fantastic. So we're using our logical mind here to get down to business, brass tacks, and which is great because when it comes to things that are draining us, we're cutting it out. We're literally leaving it behind um, in hopes of something that is a little bit better and easier to, to utilize. Something that may afford us a little bit um, more luxury, whether that is extra time, um, less stress. <laughs> Like I said, I, I'm getting the word drained over here with the Ace of Cups in the reverse. So maybe we get more energy, maybe we get more free time, maybe we're, we're cutting out distractions so much that um, we have more to utilize. Whether that's time, we're able to multitask easier, etc. And this comes after a period of things not really being successful. Uh, a little bit out of alignment, um, some jarring disconnect there. And, and with the choices we're making, we're, we're healing that, we're fixing that. So yay on correction. We like to see correction. Um, so choices, we're making better ones that support us. Now that doesn't mean we're oblivious to the past. We're, we're aware that maybe we made some poor choices. Maybe they were the wrong ones. Maybe we let things stay for far too long. Or maybe we were acting or doing something in a way where we were wasting energy, despite the fact that we were putting lots of energy in. And now we're moving forward with choices that hopefully free us up to where our energy that we are putting forth, what we're investing in, our time, our money, our energy, all those waking hours and moments will have a result and a positive one that we're able to manifest, co-create, and nurture ourselves, our mind, our bodies, um, our, our goals themselves in a way that if we stop and think about it, won't be harmful, that we're not going to get in our own way, that we're um, not causing additional issues. <laughs> Let's put it that way, additional issues. Um, I will say that there is a little bit of a pitfall, a little bit of concern that we may second guess or question our choices that maybe we'd make the wrong ones, maybe we'll screw it up, maybe we don't have what it takes to, you know, keep on trucking. And and that's a self-caused 
anxiety. Um, some logical mind analyzing is good, being aware and making choices, but overanalyzing and getting stuck, uh, not so fantastic. So there, there is a, a little bit of a medium, you know, uh, some common ground that we need to associate with this. So you might need to stop at a certain point and ask yourself, okay, do I need to make a choice? Yes or no? Okay, I made a choice. Was that choice helpful or harmful? Because if it's helpful, so if you get the extra time, um, less distractions, you feel better, um, you know, you're getting more sleep, etc., then that was probably the right choice. So if you cut something out that was draining you and all of a sudden you feel lighter, you feel happier, you get more energy, you have more time, that was probably the right choice. So doubting yourself about making that choice is just you beating yourself up. And that is probably not the best thing to do. And especially if it's something that you've refused to change for quite some time, you might be prone to you know, self-depreciation going, oh crap, why didn't I do this sooner? You can't change the past. So acknowledge that yes, it was there, maybe you took too long to do something about it and then move on because you've already made the choice to change it. So there's no point of going back to the past and rehashing that and making yourself feel bad. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Realize that going forward, you're going to make choices that are better for you. You're going to move in a way that it is going to have greater potential. So if you make a choice and it adds value, if it adds to your overall health, if it has a more positive effect, a better outcome that supports you better with what you're trying to accomplish, whether that is your health, whether the, that is your mental state, whether that is, you know, a, a physical outcome, such as, you know, um, more free time that you can utilize and focus correctly on areas that you need to, that is something positive. So go in that direction and continue making choices that are more proactive to getting more of that. And if you've made certain decisions that just seem ludicrous and off the wall from yesterday's energy trickling over, and you're doubting yourself, literally sit there and focus on it and ask yourself, is it harmful? Is it hurting anything? Um, can I give it time to question whether or not that was helpful or harmful? Can I tell right now? Um, seeing the potential for, for things to go really well rather than ex naying it right off the bat is probably going to help you more than you think for today. The full moon in Aquarius, of course, results with changes, help you get closer to where you would like to be. You feel more in tune with your eccentricities. So it's that Aquarius energy being you know, unique, independent. Um, Mars is also in Virgo, trines Jupiter and, and Taurus. Luck can um, feel like it's actually on your side, so that is great. Even maybe potentially make your own luck at the same time. You can be optimistic and focused on opportunities you do have, or in this case, the choices that you're making. So don't second guess yourself so much. Um, Mercury in Virgo is opposite Saturn and Pisces. May be difficult to focus um, on too many things. Instead, you may want to give yourself a little bit of break. And if you have to focus, try not to be so hard on yourself. Okay, so this is my second guessing part that uh, I'm picking up on. And there's nothing that says that you have to make radical changes and all these decisions and choices all in one day. Pick a few. Just pick one or two and focus on that. So if you feel slightly overwhelmed, you don't have to do it all in one go. Pace yourself. This is all about supporting you and correcting things that probably have maybe stayed for a while and there's nothing that says that you have to do that right this second all in one go it just means that today you have the ability to make a choice or two that will be highly beneficial if you don't 
second guess yourself. Make the change if you want to. See how it pans out. Give it some time. And all of your cards add up to 124, which of course reduces to seven in numerology, which is the mind and creativity. Yes, get creative. Let your uh, imagination flow. We're talking about, you know, um, Aquarius energy. So thinking outside the box, um, being unique, being different, as well as um, the mind. We're literally making choices and decisions here that will have an impact but at the same time, we're trying to avoid overanalyzing and getting yourself stuck by self-doubt. So th there's two sides to that. Make your choices, make them comfortably, give them time to see a result before you decide to beat yourself up. All right, my lovelies, I'm going to go ahead and leave this here for today. Hopefully some of this resonated for you. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.